Good morning, Money.net viewers. Today is Tuesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. It's Steve Flanagan here to discuss currencies with you. Should you have any questions or follow-ups, you can always reach me on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979. As always, I want to discuss and educate with the viewers the currency markets, giving you some of the insights and tools that I've learned over the past 40 years plus of trading in the FX markets. It's my hope that we can all come away with a better understanding of what drives and moves the currency markets. Trading FX is exciting, never a dull moment. It's always continuous Sunday afternoon in New York until 5 p.m on a Friday in New York, 24-7 right there. Well, five actually, but seven and a half trillion dollars trades each and every day in the FX market. FX is an asset class today. So many things can be expressed by trading a currency. Remember, markets close at 4 p.m. in New York, not in the currencies. We just roll over right into the very next day and continue right on. So let's talk about FX today. The dollar continues to consolidate from last week. What we're seeing, basically, we had CPI today, a little bit lower on inflation, a little bit disappointed with some people on the, on the actual number. I think you're seeing that play out in the equity market at being somewhat flat plus minus back and forth, but pretty much a flat push that day. But what we've got here in the currency market is a consolidation before another big move. We are trading very radically within prescribed ranges. You've got to know your location levels to be successful in trading the currency markets. Inflation and interest rates are our drivers and movers in the market. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Today, CPI came out and dollar yen moved almost 150 points after its release. That's volatility, and that's a lot of area in which to exit and enter positions if you know where you're at. The backdrop to all of this volatility in 2023 within prescribed ranges. Let's play out the playing field and what the market mover is. The global central banks are continuing to draw back on liquidity. This will, not might, this will increase liquidity risks throughout the world. This will ignite volatility, and you'll continue to see this play out specifically in the currency markets where $7.5 trillion trades in a single day. So with that backdrop, let's jump into some of the currency pairs that we can talk about today. If I look at the euro dollar, we've got a nice little bounce. Again, the Fed has been kind of taking the foot, it appears, off of the half a percent, three quarter percent increases in interest rates that we've seen this year. So therefore, interest rates back to the forefront, the, the ECB we know has been quite hawkish. Well, look at that. The dollar seems to have suddenly stopped or the euro dollar has found solid support. We can go back into the end of last year and see how we had such a congestion period in around this 106.60 level. Where is my location point? Right now we're at 107.35. Last week we had the lowest close of 106.79. In January, we closed at 108.70. We've got a definitive point above us, January's close. Below us, 2022 was 106.61 close in the euro dollar. And what has been the low in this entire move? 106.65 in the euro. A natural support point and a natural point of location in which to trade. 
We saw a high today of 108 after the CPI, a great area to exit a long dollar position, knowing that we've got a tremendous amount of closes at 108.40, 108.55, 108.70, and of course the January close at 108.70. So there's a location spelled out and shown right here. Solid basis support. We let the market get exuberant on the move up, keeping in mind volatility will play out this entire year. This was a great area to just exit the position. And now we look back to buy in ahead of last week's close of 106.79 with a very tight stop loss below the 106.61, which would break the 2022 closing level. That's location trading. Let's move on into the sterling. Sterling has been whipping around. Ever since we had the Bank of England pill come out and say that he's got a much more hawkish view and that we cannot let our foot up on interest rates until the job is completed, sterling is based. We've had some several days now. Today, you had a, a 122.55 high after the CPI. Sterling last week's close is 120.60. The previous week's close was 120.54. Wow, great area of support below us. Throw one more factor in. The 2022 close of 120.96. You've got 120.60, 120.54, 120.96. Solid base of support below us right now in cable. Cables are by the dip. But right here at 121.71, you're kind of in no man's land here. So you look to buy the dip in cable and, and you know, you, you trade accordingly. If you enter into trades here, you've got to be watching your charts very carefully. You've got to know where your location is because this currency is ripping and moving. Jumping into the yen, my favorite, the one I've traded most of my career. A solid dollar yen loves to get into these range type of trading. But really, what is driving dollar yen? Presently, 132.65. I sent something out on Friday night on my Twitter account that once they announced that Ueda was the new BOJ selectee for the Bank of Japan governorship to replace Kuroda, who retires in April, we quickly looked into who, who he is. Ueda-san was an architect of, but I want to talk a little bit more about this, about who is Ueda, because you must understand in Dalian the backdrop. We know BOJ intervened above 150. There's been solid base of support at 126. We've had closes of 120, of 131.07, 11. Dollar yen has really got a solid base of support. And I would look, the first comments from the new selectee BOJ governor, Ueda, was that the low interest rate policy should continue. So the whole question on the yen, is it a hawk or is it a dove? You know, interest rates are still in negative territory in, in Japan with a JGB rate of 0.5%. So... Japan is clearly the outlier in this interest rate higher environment, and they're taking a wait and see approach. So who is Ueda? Because we need to understand who he is and the backdrop of disappointment to understand where dollar yen is going to trade. Give you an example. If you look at the chart and we can see if I back up and switch into a weekly out of a daily chart, Dollar yen just loves to trend. 105, 117, forever. <laughs> and that's the type of move that dollar yen. So why is everybody so yen bullish? Dollar negative is because many of the market participants were feeling Japan will inevitably or will soon change its interest rate policy to join the world and that dollar yen would trade below the 127 down again into the 115 zone. Well, surprise, Ueda-san was announced an academic 
not a BOJ governor, an academic. And hence, Dalian quickly starts to trade up. Kashida, Prime Minister Kashida-san, has called for a wealth distribution or a new form of capitalism. So his first move hinges on who he puts in charge of the BOJ. We know Bank of Japan has intervened above 150. Why? Because that has been what they feel the catalyst to the increasing inflation within Japan as it's importing inflation as the yen weakened. So BOJ Governor Kuroda retires April 8th. Nothing will get done prior to that. The first comments Ueda san has said, I will maintain the low interest rate environment to support the economy. In his stint in 1998 to 2005 as a BOJ governor, he played a key role in the new easing tools and forward guidance that Japan ushered in. Why? Because Japan was coming out of a huge banking crisis. Remember, early in the 1990s, the Japanese banks were in the tops five of the largest banks in the world. You won't find them there now, but back in those days, so Ueda-san came out of this period of time. He understands the impact that the banking sector has on the financial markets. Keeping in mind, Japan has been in a deflationary environment for 20 plus years. So he's an economics professor. He will base his decisions on facts and data. Do not expect Japanese interest rate policy to swing suddenly. This will probably play out over the later part of 2023 into 2024, where I think Japan will, of course, move from the, um, the zero or negative interest rates that they're presently running. So the bottom line is, yes, Japan will move interest rate policy, but not till the later part of 2023 into 2024. In this foreign exchange trader's humble opinion. So that's about it for the currency markets today. Um, it's exciting to be in the currencies. Let's keep currencies, let's keep FX hot. And I'll see you on Thursday morning to follow up on the currency discussion. Should you have any questions or want to hit me up on Twitter, S. Flanagan, 1979. This is Steve Flanagan out.